What's up everyone? So today we're going to do a fun problem where we're going to try and find the angle between two hands on a clock face by taking in the time that the clock is representing and trying to calculate the angle between the hands in that representation. So we have a simple example here where our clock is at 1110 and it doesn't matter whether it's AM or PM because we're using a 12 hour analog clock and we get an angle of 85 degrees which is almost 90 degrees not quite and if we look at an actual clock face this makes a lot of sense and the reason is you can see we have our 11 which is our hour hand and we have two or or 10 which is our 10 minutes which is our minute hand and then this angle here which is basically 90 degrees except that as you probably know when we go from as the minute hand goes around the clock the hour hand slowly progresses across between these two numbers so essentially what we're doing is we have our clock which the hour hand is now about here and the minute hand is here so we get 85 degrees which is what we would expect so let's think about how we could actually solve this problem and first of all we want to ask a couple questions of our interviewer for example are we returning our our angle in radians or degrees like questions like this that are sort of critical to what you're actually going to be doing and maybe don't really matter in terms of you would solve the problem the same way either way but it's still very valuable for you to ask and if you're like me and you don't remember really how to work with radians then maybe that makes a big difference so little things like that are important to ask and we also have things like do we want to return just the nearest integer degree value to the time that it's representing or do we want to get very specific like do we want to return do a double or do we want to return an integer or do we want to return a float or how are we actually representing this and you know it doesn't really matter too much you could definitely go get away with returning all integers because the differences between the degrees are so small that the rounding wouldn't make a big difference but in this case I'm just going to use doubles because it's going to make we're going to be doing a bunch of division and I don't want to have all these uh, like truncation when I do the integer division so I'm going to use doubles just because it's going to make all the math easier and one final question is which angle are we actually returning so if we go back to our clock diagram here and we can remove these marks but we have are we returning this angle or are we returning this angle? Whoops. This angle. So we want to make sure that we talk to our interviewer and discuss what it is that we're actually supposed to be doing. Because, for example, you could imagine a case where our clock maybe is representing, let's go back to our 1110 then the angle that is probably makes most sense at some level is going to be this angle here but that's not going to be the smallest angle so we actually want to use the angle between the 11 and the 2. so in this case what we're going to say is that we're going to always return the smaller of the two angles so we're going to return a, a not overly wide angle or we're going to make sure that our angle is under 180 degrees so let's start thinking about how we're actually going to solve this problem and this clock diagram is going to be really helpful for, for us to think about how we're going to do it and really the important thing here to remember when you're solving the problem is that you can draw on the board and you can draw this clock diagram for yourself it's a little hard to do on the computer here but you have the capability of drawing literally whatever you want and it's going to make your life so much easier and i highly highly recommend doing that so when we actually dig in and look at this problem so let's look at the actual clock time that we have represented here so we're trying to find this angle and there are a couple ways we could do this so if you remember trigonometry from high school, you could in theory do something trigonometric. Like you could maybe break these down into two right into two right triangles and then use the use one of your trigonometric ratios to actually compute what the angles are and yada yada. You could just draw a line across like this and you could do something more complicated there's some you know you can do this using trigonometry you can calculate what the angle is but then you also need to know what the lengths of the different hands of the clock are and you need to know all of this additional information so 
what I would say in this case is to realize that maybe there's a simpler solution. It's not always the first solution you come up with is not always the best solution and is not always the simplest solution. And if you find yourself getting into something that's seeming to get very complex or it seems like it would require knowledge that you might not have, like trigonometry. Like you may you aren't expected to remember trigonometry. So, if you find yourself going down that rabbit hole, then I would highly recommend stepping back and thinking about is there another way I can solve this? Because in this case, there is another way we can solve this and so if we well what would be an easy angle that we could calculate so one possibility would be this angle here between these two hands so we have it's this angle that goes around like this and we know that the each minute basically is a certain number of degrees on a circle because each minute is evenly spaced and there are 365 60 degrees in a circle so we could tell exactly well for example for the minute hand we know in this case so let's actually i'm just going to remove these temporarily so let's say that we want this angle here so we have the uh, we know that it's in this case it's our time is 340 so we know they're exactly 40 minutes and we can say okay so a minute is there's 60 minutes in an hour and there are 360 degrees in a circle so 360 divided by 6 is divided by 60 is 6 degrees per minute so each of these minutes is 6 degrees and then we have 40 minutes so therefore we have 40 times 6 degrees or uh, 240 degrees in this case. So we can do that very simply to calculate the minutes and then we can also do the same thing for the hours or we can do something similar for the hours. So in this case we have this is our angle for the hours and we can and we know that so it's easy to calculate to the hour. So we have the this is three o'clock so we can calculate each hour is also a set number of degrees and in this case each hour is 30 degrees and then in addition to that we have this extra short little angle here that is based off of the number of minutes right because we're doing this we can basically divide this one hour into an additional 60 degrees or additional 60 sections and each one is one minute so in this case we, you know we or alternatively we could say what proportion of the way through the hour are we and apply that so in this way we're two-thirds of the way through the hour so we could say that this hour hand should then be pointing at it should be this angle here of the hour plus the angle of this additional hour times two thirds and that way we can and we can sum those up to get the actual angle of the hour hand so let's go back and we'll actually start coding this up and hopefully that makes sense so far it's a little bit tricky but drawing the pictures really really helps so we're just going to implement a public method and then we're going to return a double and we're going to call it clock i'm going to call it clock angle and it's going to take in an int hour and int minute. And in theory, your hour or your minute at least could be a double and that could represent the number of seconds or you could add like seconds as another field. In this case, we're not worrying about that level of fidelity, although it's something that would be worth mentioning because the hour hand will vary slightly between within an, a single minute or possibly it might be worth mentioning that there are clocks out there that are designed so that the hour hand basically move it does leave the little mini ticks once every minute so it, it depends on how the clock works but we're assuming some like smooth motion in this problem and we're also assuming a fidelity of no greater than one minute so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to define a couple constants because the constants are going to make solving the rest of this problem much, much easier. So uh, for example, we have our minutes in an hour and some of these seem a little unnecessary. Like everyone knows that there are 60 minutes in an hour, but the advantage of doing this is that it really shows that you're thinking about writing a maintainable code because when someone looks back at this later rather than just seeing a 60 or rather than seeing these magic numbers all over the place they're going to easily be able to understand okay what are you doing with these numbers or what is this representing so 
I like even in an interview, even in this very, when you're writing this very short piece of code, I really like being specific with these sorts of design strategies that will help your code be cleaner because it really shows that, because you're really trying to show that you would be a good software engineer at their company. So this is something that every software engineer should do. So another, another constant that we'll add is degrees per minute. And the reason for doing this is that it's going to make it super easy for us to calculate the number of minutes in, our, or the angle of the minutes. So we are going to, this in this case, we just have 360 degrees divided by the number of minutes per hour. This should be minutes. And once we do all this, all so I forgot to mention this earlier, but if we go back to our clock, when we calculate, we're going to calculate these two angles to the vertical. And then once we do that, hopefully it's obvious at this point, but we can just take the difference of those two angles to get this angle here. And that's going to make it, and that's how we're actually going to go from calculating the angles to the vertical to actually getting the answer that we want. But back into here, we're going to the last constant that I'm going to create is a final double, and this is going to be degrees per hour. And again, this is going to help us to actually compute the number of, or the angle of the hour hand. And it's just going to make life a little easier because we're sort of doing some of the computation that we would have to do up front. And in this case, it's 360 divided by 12. And in this case, you could do hours per clock face or something like set 12 as a constant, but in this case, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to be reusing it other than here. So in this case, I'm going to be reusing minutes per hour, but I'm not reusing this. So I don't think it's as necessary, but you could do that if you want to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the angles for both. So the minute angle is really easy to do because all we have to do is take minutes. I'm going to actually call this minutes, not minute, minutes times minutes per hour or times degrees per minute. Sorry. And obviously minutes cancel out and you just get degrees and that's what you expect. And then for the hours, it's obviously a little more complicated, but first we do the, we're going to call it our angle. And then we're going to say that First, we have hour times degrees per hour. And now let's go back to our clock again. And so we just got this angle here. And now what we need to do is get this second angle here between after the actual hour. So what I'm going to do for this, you could do this a couple different ways. I think that the easiest way is going to be to find, as I mentioned earlier, find the proportion of the minutes to an hour, because we know that in this case, we're two thirds of the way through the hour. And therefore I can do two thirds times degrees per hour to get that extra value. You could also do it other ways, but I think that's going to be easiest. So I'm just going to do minutes divided by minutes per hour and then, or and then I'm going to multiply that by degrees per hour. So I'm just going to say minute minutes divided by minutes per hour. And let me actually put this onto a new line. Minutes divided by minutes per hour times degrees per hour. And obviously we're summing these together because we have the, it's sort of the first part and the second part. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to take the difference of them. So we're going to go ahead and just say that double diff equals, I'm going to do math dot absolute value so that I'm going to make sure that I get the positive version of the angle. And so I'm just going to do minute, minute angle minus hour angle. 
And then we want to, we discussed at the beginning that we want our angle to always be less than 180 degrees. So we want to have the smaller angle. And to do this, all we have to do is just say that if it's greater than 180 degrees, then our angle is equal to 360 degrees minus that angle. So we can just do diff, if diff is greater than 180, then return 360 minus diff. And otherwise we're just gonna return diff. So that's all there is to it. This problem is one of those problems that drawing makes a huge, huge difference and it just makes it so much easier. And let's actually go through and do this, do uh, an example of this problem just to make sure that it works the way that we expect it to. So we can just use this example here. So we're gonna pass in 11 and 10. We, come, we calculate the minutes angle is minutes times degrees per minute. So in this case, minutes is 10. And we're going to do, so we're going to do 10 times, and in this case it's 360 divided by 60, which is 6. So 6 equals 60 degrees for the minute hand, or yeah, for the minute hand. And then for the hour hand, so hours, or hour equals 11. And then to calculate it, we do hour times degrees per hour, which is going to be 11 times 30 degrees per hour because it's 360 divided by 12 and then plus we have to add minutes divided by minutes per hour so in this case we have 10 divided by 360 so it's 10 divided by or sorry 10 divided by 60 times degrees per hour, which is 30. So if we do this math, we get, you know, 300 divided by 60, which of course now I set myself up to have to do math in my head, but I believe that that is five. And then we're just going to sum these up. So we have 11 times 30 plus five. So we get 335. And then we're just gonna have to take the difference of these. So 335 degrees minus 60 degrees is going to be 275 degrees. And then obviously we, in this case, we have that. So we're gonna come down here, we got the difference. And then diff is greater than 180. So we're gonna have to do 360 minus, so let's see, 360 minus 275, we get, that that is equal to 85. And so that is what we expect it to be and that all makes sense. And yes, it does take a little more mental math than some of the other problems that we've done, but hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below or on the blog. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.